This week's constellations are Aquila, Lyra, and Cygnus. I'll also show you a couple that you won't be tested on, Delphinus and Sagitta. This is a star field that shows all of these constellations. First one here, this is Cygnus, the swan. It has a long swan's neck, tail, short tail, and two arms. It's flying down and to the left here a little bit. It's also known as, as the Northern Cross. Below it, down here, is Lyra, which is a supposedly a harp, representation of an old harp, I guess. I'm not sure just what that type of harp looks like, but there it is anyway. It's a little parallelogram is what it is. And then down here is Aquila, I'm pronouncing it as close as I can get to the way it's pronounced in Latin and Italian. So Aquila will have to do. Here is uh, Sagitta, the arrow, very small constellation. And then up here is Delphinus, the dolphin. Some stars that you need to learn in Cygnus. Deneb. That word means tail. That's the tail of the swan. Sodder. And Alberio. Alberio is at the tip of the nose of the swan. In Lyra, just one star that you need to learn the name of. Vega. They're a very bright star. That's one that'll be the pole star in about 13,000 years or so. And then down in Aquila, the one bright star you need to know in there is Altair. Here's a somewhat different view of the that part of the sky. Deneb, Vega, and Altair those three stars, each one the brightest star in its constellation, form an asterism of their own. When you go out on a summer evening, as the sky is getting dark, if you look straight overhead, these three stars are often about the first three things that you'll see. And they form something that we call the Summer Triangle. Fade out that part there, and then fade out the triangle, try to pick those three up again, Deneb, Vega, and Altair. The Summer Triangle. Here's another view of these constellations. Because they're straight overhead, you can view them from many different angles, and depending on how you're standing, you may see it looking very much different. Cygnus the swan here. There you've got the tail of the swan to your left and the tip of the nose above and to the right there. Lyra up there. And Aquila there. This next picture is one that uh, I took and it's overexposed. I got too many stars in here, but sometimes it's just nice to see how crowded this part of the sky is with stars. There's Lyra there. Cygnus right there. And Aquila down there. Seeing a lot of stars packed into here. Delphinus and Sagitta. And another parts of another constellation, or parts of two other constellations. Uh, these are some that uh, you've either studied or will study later Ophiuchus and Serpens. Now let's look at the name of a few of these Cygnus up there, Lyra there, Aquila. And Ophiuchus over here. Also in this part of the sky, 
is a small asterism that you really need binoculars to see. With the naked eye, about all you can see is just a faint fuzzy patch of stars up here. But uh, this is something called Brachy's Cluster, also known as the coat hanger. And if we connect some dots here in this picture, you can see why it's called the coat hanger. This was not named by the ancient Greeks. Also in this part of the sky is a lot of nebulosity, which is tough to see even with binoculars or a telescope. Uh, you need a long time exposure to show this stuff up, but it's pretty spectacular when you do see that. To orient yourself, here's Deneb and there's Sodder. So the uh, line of stars for Cygnus the Swan kind of run from Deneb through Sodder and then on beyond there. This bright patch down here, which supposedly you can see with the naked eye, although I've had a really hard time trying to see it. But uh, this is the North American Nebula, shaped a little bit like North America. Above it is the Pelican Nebula. I'll show you a more magnified picture of that shortly here. It does kind of look like a pelican. The Crescent Nebula there and the Tulip Nebula up there. And then in this region of the sky, between us and the areas of nebulosity is something, this part of it is called the Northern Coal Sack, but it runs throughout the plane of the Milky Way galaxy and it's sometimes called the Great Rift. It's uh, a large cloud of uh, cold gas and dust that absorbs the light shining from behind it. It's an absorption nebula and blocks off our view of a lot of nebulosity and stars that are behind there. Here's the Pelican Nebula and uh, you can maybe see why it has that name. And uh, here's a little bit of cultural enlightenment for you. This is part of a short poem called The Pelican, and uh, Dixon Lanier Merritt wrote it. I'd always thought this was by a poet named Ogden Nash, but it turns out Merritt wrote it long before Ogden Nash was writing poems. This is a magnified view of Lyra, and you can see the asterism there, the upper right-hand corner star there is Vega. And in Lyra, halfway between these two stars, part of the parallelogram there, is a uh, good telescope object. You can't even see it in this magnified picture here. It's one of the most beautiful things in the sky, although when we look at it through our telescope, about all we can see is a faint gray donut. But when you get a big telescope on it for a long time exposure, you see something more spectacular. This is M57, the Ring Nebula. There's a picture of it taken. I think this may have been with the Hubble. I'm not positive. But a uh, spectacular picture when you take a long enough time exposure. A planetary nebula. This is the last gasp of a dying star, a star like the sun. At the end of its lifetime, the sun will puff, puff off its outer layers of gas and form something like this. That's the end of this week's presentation.